a electronic tonic here with my uh, coil winding machine for my Tesla coil that I'm building. Um, it's a four and a half inch PVC pipe and I'm going to have to wind 750 meters of 30 gauge wire that comes out to 2,088 turns and there's no way I'm going to sit down and and uh, manually wind 2,000 turns of wire onto a pipe as it's rolling along. I've already done that before and it's not fun. Not 2,000 turns but about uh, 800 turns I've done on a different coil and man it was tough. So I made a almost fully automatic coil winding machine that'll go from start to finish with no intervention hopefully. Um, I got it powered up by this by this Bodine electric motor. It's a 120 volt DC motor and you'd think if it was DC you could reverse the polarity and then reverse the direction but that's not true because um, because the, it doesn't have permanent magnets it has um, electric magnets for the rotor and for the stator so when you reverse the direction on one it gets reversed on the other one too so it only goes in one one way I got that powered up by a little uh, little uh, foot switch down here uh, there's actually a, a a rheostat in there so I can control the speed of it step on it a little bit and it just goes step on it more and it goes faster I got this um, old school carbon filament lamp on there too uh, just so to help to drop the voltage along the rheostat otherwise the motor will go to full speed if, even if I just step on the pedal a little bit and um, over here I got a switch a little micro switch with a rubber foot pad on there and that increments the counter so I can keep track of how many turns it's going on and the part I spent two days working on this thing and here's why this is this is the bread and butter of the whole thing and this is a perfect example of why it's good to keep stuff from things you take apart I got this um, this whole this slider on a carbide steel blade, a carbide steel um, rod here, and and this aluminum sliding mechanism that came out of a an old uh, photocopier I took apart years ago, and then there's these two pulleys down here. They came out of some radio or something with uh, they were used for the uh, linking up of the of the uh, the variable capacitor and the tuning knob and the tuning dial that showed you the radio station and of course that's where the wire will be going when I hook it up and then as the, the pipe is spinning the wire goes up along here it goes along the, the piece of plastic that came out of some optics assembly um, and it just fits nicely on the four and a half inch pipe um, with the help of the aluminum uh, pieces here holding it in place but anyway that the whole point of this is so that as the as the wire builds up from left to right this will always be up against the wire and very slowly push it along very slowly guide it along so I don't have to sit there with my own fingers to guide it of course there is there is um, motorized controls that could be used to do this too but I think this is just a more elegant solution because uh, there's no it's it's all it's all a mechanical system and um, and just you know keep the whole thing on the pipe there's this big big steel bar I got here to weigh it down to make sure that it stays it stays um, makes good contact with the pipe along the whole length of this piece of gray plastic and the wire, the spool wire that's all the way back here it's a spool 30 gauge wire and I got it going through this cheesecloth here um, 
weighted down by a seven pound transformer that's that's just to keep it clean there's a little bit of dust on the on the spool of wire so and the reason it's so far away is so that when it when the wire gets all the way over here um, there will be very little difference I mean it'll be um, in the angle that the wire wire will come in on an angle and it'll be about the same angle for the whole length of the pipe now I'm going to have to stop halfway through because the carbide steel rod here as you can see is not quite long enough so I'll stop halfway through and then move this piece over a little bit and then uh, put the pipe on the other side of it and keep it going and uh, I'll get it started and we'll see see how well it works okay here it is ready to go I got some uh, pre windings are pre already on the pipe and you can see the wire goes through the two pulleys down there and um, I'm going to start it on 2,000, so I, I mean I should stop at 4,088 turns, but I'll be stopping at about 3,000 or so, so I can move this whole rod and guider assembly to the other side of the pipe. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to got a little thing here to hold the foot pedal in place. I don't have to sit here with my foot on it the whole time. You can see it counting there. And it seems to be working pretty well. is building up and as it builds up it just pushes on the, the piece of plastic and then that of course pulls the whole guiding assembly along with it. It was a real pain to make it work this well because because of how thin the wire is. It's 30 gauge wire, very thin wire. If it was thicker, like it was 26, 24 gauge it would be no problem but 30 gauge had some problems with uh, making sure that the plastic doesn't just go over top of the wire. At first, the reason I had so many problems in the first place is because instead of the wire coming out on a 80 degree angle here from the perpendicular, it was more, more or less parallel to the pipe. I had it going through that little hole and over to the end of the table, and I figured the force of pulling on the wire would help to keep the plastic um, up against the the already wound loops, but um, it was too much, too much force, and it just messed, messed the whole thing up. So I figured put the wire almost perpendicular and just rely on friction to to keep it on there. It just has to push against the friction and um, and a little bit of this wire pulling since it's not you know at a perfect 90 degree angle. Got 30 turns already. Only about 2,050 to go. It's looking pretty good so far. Got almost about 500 turns on here. I find that I do have to watch it diligently. Um, watch the counter because when it flips over on the hundreds place sometimes it skips a little bit and uh, messes up my count. I had to stop a few times early on and physically count how many turns. Looks like it flipped over to 500 pretty nicely there but other times it uh, didn't flip over and it uh, missed a count and it would be one count less than what was actually on the pipe. So we'll see how that goes for the rest of the winding.